Friends, we are gathered here today at Montreal's Olympic Stadium, home of the Expos, because on so many days in the past, very few people have actually deigned to gather here. In a rabid sports town, the Expos are once again on life support. There's a death watch on the team. For whatever reason, Montreal has never actually taken big league baseball to its bosom. And unless there's a complete turnaround this season, and that would be a major medical miracle, the team will doubtless be going to a far, far better place than it has ever gone before, struck down and out by an inexplicable disinterest. Spring training with replacement players. The recent strike couldn't have come at a worse time for a small market team like the Expos. Montreal had the best record in baseball last season when the strike began. It looked as if the team was finally going to reverse its accursed luck. Then the strike. Pennant interrupts us once again. Another blow in 26 seasons of assiduous wooing of the elusive Montreal sports fan, who seems to prefer the flash and dash of hockey over the more gentle pleasures of the summer game. And this will be the crunch season. The team's losing money. So the local owners can't afford to pay their stars because the attendance is so low. So the big names go elsewhere, and then more fans go elsewhere as well. A vicious circle. The team needs a modest 20,000 season ticket holders. They've got 7,000. You can't blame the owners if they wanted to throw up their hands and sell to outsiders. From Virginia is the latest rumor. It had stopped the hemorrhage, and given the inexplicably high value of franchises, they'd make a nice profit on their investment. Tempting. It's been a tough slog for Expo's president, Claude Brochu, who heads the group of local investors who bought the team from Charles Bronfman to keep it from being moved to the U.S., a move that would be a crushing affront to the city's sense of itself. The loss of a, of a major professional franchise is, I'm sure, the most devastating thing uh, a city can live through. Uh, it, it's something that, that becomes a stain. My former boss, Charles Bronfman, is a great Canadian, used to always say that, in his estimation, uh, sports is probably the most unifying element in our society as Canadians and and I believe that and uh, you know to lose it uh, for a city to lose it it's something that will never come back it's lost forever it's lost for uh, you know for countless generations of kids it, it, uh, you lose all the pleasures that you, that you drive from it yeah. you have a yeah let me use yours JD That'll work. no player gave Expo fans more enjoyment than Gary Carter who played for them during their more competitive yeah, years in the early 80s you. almost as popular as Guy Lafleur He's a broadcaster now and still recalls Montreal as a city of fair weather fans, not prepared for the long haul through difficult stretches of losing baseball. When we were playing well, the fans came out. But when we weren't, it was disappointing because we felt that when we were on the field that we didn't have the absolute support. And, and it made it more difficult because you always need your home field advantage and that support. And I, I think that most uh, players got the idea, and I'm sure you could just about go down the line and ask each one of them and they, that, that they're more hockey-oriented fans. And, and uh, if we were not winning, they were not going to come out. And the final score is the Montreal Expos 8, the St. Louis Cardinals 7. Olympic Stadium, built for the Olympics. Its futuristic design was supposed to be state of the stadium art. Looked great, both as a concept and when viewed from a distance. But such a price, way over budget. Montreal is still in hock to it. There it is, Olympic Stadium, the new home of the Montreal Expos. And that accursed roof that was supposed to open and close, despite frequent, increasingly expensive overhauls, it never did work right. Even beams, huge chunks of concrete were falling off the structure. The luck of the Expos to be associated in the public mind with a dreary, rapidly aging and hideously expensive ballpark far from the downtown core. Here comes Warren Cromartie. He's all for three tonight. Former Expo Warren Cromartie thinks the club's troubles have had a lot to do with where they played. 
Up with it. Hendrick, the throw. Uh, I think that, that was the, the worst comma of them all. Building the, 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 the dome there. The, that started the whole thing. What do you mean? Never should have got built. Wrong way of going out getting built. And all of a sudden, this, this thing starts cracking. Things starts falling. People don't want to go in there. People don't want to play. The conditions are unbearable. People love the town, the city itself. But you got to go play in that, uh, that toilet bowl, we used to call it. <laughs> the roof's sealed now. Can't open it on a nice day. Makes little difference how much they tart the place up. In summer, it's little more than a steam bath. And if you think the fans like schwitzing, drop over to any sports bar in town and talk baseball. Talk soon gets around to that hellish park. There it is. Maybe all this carping wouldn't mean a thing if the universe had unfolded as it should have in 1981. The year the Expos were destined to win the pennant. He's got it. The Expos win. The fans just knew it. Oh, La Guar, La Guar. A Canadian team with a shot at playing in the World Series. All they had to do was get past the Dodgers. We were all riveted, with no reason to think we wouldn't get our just desserts. Put the champagne on ice. Then, on a chilly Monday, in the deciding game at Olympic Stadium, a most unpleasant thing happened. Top of the ninth, game tied 1-1. The Expo's best pitcher served up an innocent-looking ball to a light-hitting Dodger, Rick Monday. Get to center and hit well. I said, oh, no. Oh, God, no, please. No, no. Hit the wall. Hawk, catch it. Please, no. Over and over again. Exactly what I said. Oh, yeah. I can still see if I close my eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Devastated. And Monday will touch them all. I think that's the black mark that still exists in the organization is that we never did win the big one. And the Dodgers are National League champions. They called it Blue Monday in Montreal. And Montreal never forgave the Expos for raising, then dashing their hopes which Expo President Claude Brochu finds outrageously unfair. You can't just look at baseball with the idea that, it's, that you've got to win, and you've got to win big. Uh, I hope baseball is more, the, more than that, and if that becomes the, the only criteria for, for, a, for a sports club, uh, then you're in trouble, because you can't guarantee that. Uh, Montreal has had the best team in the National League since 1979. More wins than anybody else. So we deliver. Uh, when we can deliver. Uh, we, baseball, I would hope, is more than that. For announcer Claude Raymond, the pall of Blue Monday still hangs over the Expos, and he's particularly wrangled because he's a Montreal boy who now works the team's French-language telecasts, but pitched well for the team in its difficult early years. It's hard to blame him if he sounds like a pitchman at a telethon. He bleeds Expo. Right now we need help. We need help from the, the broadcasters, we need help from the newspaper guys, we need, we need help from everybody. And, you know, it's, a, it's a, such a great game. And it hurts me because I was raised in baseball and this is my game and I, I keep saying it's the, the most beautiful game in the world. And uh, I, I, we need help right now and I hope the people will answer. If the Expos slip away, the city will survive but there'll be an emptiness where there might have been a field of dreams. <laughs>